Thank you to Snakestone97 for their generous donation on Patreon. Again with the hello everyone, my name is Deckerlink the Trained Unprofessional, and welcome back to Echo! Oh, tits! I glance up through the grid, but I don't see anything. Still, I get the unnerving feeling that the opening is breathing somehow. Is he alright? Julian shouting and running up next to me uh, turns my attention back to TJ. I look down into the links and see his ears twitching around. Oh, what? I crouch down next to him, putting a paw behind his head to give him some support. TJ, what happened? Are you okay? TJ turns to me, blinking in confusion. Okay, what's wrong? Rubs at his eyes with the back of his paw before adjusting himself so that he can sit up straight. You were just sitting there. You almost looked... Julian pauses. It looked like you were passed out or something. TJ's TJ f seems to f finally seems to focus on us. The day's look in his eyes disappearing. Passed out? Oh no! I was just taking a quick nap. <laughs> TJ lets out a short laugh and leans his head back against his backpack. What here? I look back at the sealed mine. The ominous blackness still seeming to yawn open at us. Why? Well, it's hotter than usual today, so I started to feel like I was going to pass out. Thought that might be a bad sign to us, so I decided to rest once I got here. You came here on purpose? Yeah, I saw the canyon with you last time, so I decided to take a trip uh, to the mine this time. TJ smiles lazily up at me as he continues to lounge against his backpack. Sorry I worried you, and... Oh, Julian! TJ seems to suddenly realize that the stag is there here. What are you doing here? TJ quickly gets to his feet, sliding his arms out of the straps of his backpack. He hugs Julian. Jealousy! The stag hugging back just as enthusiastically. TJ doesn't even greet me. Didn't doesn't seem even greet me so intimately. I guess they have more of a history than I thought. Hey TJ. Yeah, I met Chase at the diner. You weren't answering your text, so we both decided to come up and find you. That and Ch that and Chase needs so to get some footage for his project. Oh, cool! Do you need help with that, Chase? TJ turns to me with a grin. I don't know what it is, but TJ's acting a lot more chipper than he was yesterday. It's that almost dark broodiness is gone, replaced by his usual cheer. I have to smile because of it, despite the situation just a few minutes ago. Sure. Another breeze of cool air seems to whoosh softly through the rebar. I look back at it. TJ, why the hell would you sleep here next to the creepy mine? TJ frowns. It was really cool. Like, cold. I was laying in the opening and felt some cold, cool air blow out, so I decided to lean against it. It was really nice. TJ walks up to the metal grid and spreads his arms out, clutching out of the bars as he presses his face against it. Ah. Uh, he leans his head back, pulling a face. Well, it smells really musty, but it feels good. Hmm. I look back at the opening, the blackness inside sending chills up my spine. There's dead bodies in there! Ah, we know this because of the other routes, oh god! I think back to when a body was found in there over a hundred years ago. Even though I know there aren't any dead bodies in there now, THERE ARE! It still creeps me the fuck out. I try to hide my shudder as I turn away, looking back at the truck. Hey, so are we going to Sydney's old house now? Is that why you guys came to find me? TJ's trying to hide it, but I can hear the eagerness in his voice. I turn back to look at him, the Lynx now with his back to mine, pressed up against it. I want to tell him to move away from the opening, but I wouldn't be able to explain to him why. Uh, let me get some filming done first. I can do the voiceover later, so it'll be quick. I hold back a wince as I realize how much at that time that's going to take. My project is going to be shit at this point. Can't avoid that. Just need to make it to at le the, the least shit as I can. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> TJ laughs nervously then looks away. Sorry, I'm just a little loopy from my nap. You guys really surprised me. It's okay, I'm gonna go get my equipment really quick. Really quick, okay? Alright. DJ nods at me and I jog off to the parked truck to grab my camera. 
So, TJ might still be acting a little weird, but I'm just, I'm just glad that he seems happy again. Seeing him the way he was last night was a little unnerving, to say the least. I scoop up my camera bag from the bed of the truck and head back, slowing down to a walk as the heat is already starting to catch up with me. How TJ was able to go on a several hour long hike is absurd to me. It almost seems foolish. Especially for someone like TJ who knows who who knows how about how dangerous that can be. When I got back to the mine entrance, I say Julian and TJ sitting with their backs to either side of the opening, chatting with each other. They're eating granola bars, and TJ holds one out to me as I approach. Thanks. Hey, TJ? Huh? TJ looks up at me innocently. If you go on a hike again, be sure to bring me next time, okay? I don't think you should be alone out here. Oh. Yeah, sure. His ears droop a little, a small frown on his face. I just don't want you to get hurt, you know? It's really hot today, and it would have been really bit terrible if you'd passed out alone. Yeah, sorry. I drop my bag gently on the ground before leaning back against the wall next to the links. It's all good, I just want to make sure you're okay. Heh, <laughs> thanks. I just didn't want to wake you, wake you up this morning. Jenna offered to go with you, didn't she? TJ sighs quietly, looking away into the mine. Yeah, but I can tell you guys don't want to go. I just don't want to. I just don't want to ruin this trip for you more than I already have. What, TJ? What are you talking about? TJ goes quiet, then shrugs his shoulders. Maybe he isn't back to his old self after all. I wouldn't mind going with you, TJ. I love hiking. Julian smiles gently at the links. For some reason, I feel a tiny tug of annoyance in my chest. It's stupid, but I was the one who offered first, and I'm the one that took TJ out the first time. Yeah, we could both go. The point is, you don't go, you don't go out alone next, alone next time. All right, Tej? Yeah, okay. Thanks, guys. No problem. A short silence stretches out between the three of us before Julian speaks up again. We were just talking about our old Bible study group. Ugh. TJ leans his head back against the wall, rolling his eyes. It's an expression I don't see from him very often. What about it? Oh, just the way that TJ would always take it so seriously and no one else would, haha. <laughs> TJ shakes his head in exasperation. Yeah, I never had any control in that club. Oh really? Were you in charge? It's a little odd to think of TJ in a leadership position like that. I just never knew him to put himself out there in high school. Yeah, I revived it after... I, re I revived it after it sort of went defunct for a few years. Wasn't all that popular. DJ smiles with some embarrassment. Yeah, we had like three other members that... In then not including you or me. Yeah, then one dropped out after like two meetings. Julian clicks his tongue. What a godless school we went to. Hey! You know I'm kidding. Mostly. Well, I did want atheists to join too, as long as they weren't disruptive. I just wanted to show everyone what a nice experience it could be, even if you didn't believe. I very vaguely remember TJ inviting me to the club and me saying that I'd think about it. I never went, of course. It wasn't all that spiritual in the end, though. Yeah, mostly we just talked and brought snacks. It took TJ a while to realize no one wanted another Sunday school session at actual school. Yep, hours of planning out the window. It was still a great time. I think the four of us are really happier for it. Yeah, I guess. TJ seems to suddenly notice me. Ah, oh, sorry, Chase. You wouldn't know much about this stuff. It's okay. It's interesting to hear about. Again, I get that little twinge of jealousy, even though its I know it's not fair. I had chosen not to show up, probably using that time to go home and hang out with Leo. You didn't miss much, just discussions about movies and watching movies, too. Ugh, they couldn't even be religiously themed. Thank God. Hey! How about how indignant TJ is? Well, I'm glad you had a good time, at least. I came away thinking the whole thing was a failure. I think I remember you mentioning that you wished your friend here would have shown up. 
Eh, I don't really remember. Of course you do, you said it all the time. Teachers just flatten and turn red. Who, me? Yep. Julian grins as TJ tries to look away. Well, the situation is kind of funny, now I feel even worse about not ever showing up. Uh, sorry, Tej. You know, it was high school and all. Yeah, I understand. Don't worry about it. So, did you start another club at your new school? TJ smirks. It's a Christian school, so there's like 50 clubs about religion. Oh, are you a member of any of them? Uh, a few. Which ones? Uh, a singles club? Singles? As in finding a date? Sure. He looks away again. It's hilarious how bashful he is about this stuff. He's in college. All of this should be natural to talk about, but not with TJ. Meet anyone? Hey, Chase, don't you have to f film and stuff? Film some stuff? He looks back at me with a frown. Oh, just asking. Julian chuckles quietly. I bend down and start pulling out my equipment, deciding that a few long shots with the tripod should be enough. As I'm extending out the legs, Julian asks TJ about the hike. Was it fun? TJ shrugs, finishing the last of his granola bar and pushing his paws together to get rid of the crumbs. It was okay. It was really quiet. I wince as one of my pads gets pinched between the metal. Kinda creepy, to be honest. I would like it if you two went along sometime if I do it, if I do it again. Of course. Yeah, definitely. Over the next 20 minutes, I set up the camera in three different spots, getting about a one minute of film for each. TJ and Julian went to sit in the truck while I do, and whenever I glanced at them, they seemed to be animatedly chatting and laughing. Once I'm done, I sigh and quickly snap the legs back down into the bag along with the camera. I see my to-go box in the dirt and consider picking it up, but I don't. Oh, I drop the bag into the truck again before hopping into the passenger seat, leaving TJ to sit between the two of us. They go quiet as we start pulling out onto the dirt road. What are you guys talking about? Not much, just about high school. TJ nods. Again, I'm starting to feel a little left out between the two, kind of like a third wheel. So, what's the plan now? Well, we thought we might go to the house now after we pick up Jenna and Carl. All right. We drive in silence a little while, for, and for some reason I start to wish that I was sitting in the middle. The way Julian keeps turning the wheel forces his elbow to brush up against TJ's side, and I force myself to look away, wondering what the fuck I'm thinking. I'm treating TJ like he's something that belongs to me. We've only hung out recently over the course of this week. If I'd barely talked to him in the past two years. Force myself to look ahead out the windshield. Then TJ's phone buzzes, and my eyes naturally go to the screen as the Lynx whips it out. I see the name Flynn and the message underneath it. I only have time to see a few words. You know, his fucking tell me. TJ jerks his phone back down when and I look away just as I feel the Lynx's eyes on my face. I wonder if he saw me looking, and I'm sure he did. That didn't really matter, though, because now I'm wondering what the fuck Flynn thinks where he's doing. They've been staying away from each other for the past few days, obviously, but I guess Flynn found another way to get to DJ. I wonder what the fuck he's he think he's doing. I feel myself getting angry. Don't exactly know what the lizard is saying to TJ, but judging by what I saw, it definitely it's definitely not good. I make a mental note to ask TJ about it tonight. If you won't tell me, then I'll let Leo know. He'll do something about it. We all, we all walk up to the sidewalk in the old ranch-style house. It's been a long, long time since I've seen this place. Even longer since I've walked down, walked on this path. Sydney's house is up the gravel road behind the forest. It's a bit of an odd spot, secluded from the rest of the town. It was all the better for us, I guess. It's nice not to be reminded of what happened. Guys, I don't know about this. You think he's gonna let us in? What else can we do? Uh, maybe Sydney didn't mean his room. Where else would he sleep? I don't know. 
I mean, he'd nap in random places, if I remember the, if I remember right. Like, he slept on my couch, even. Stop it, Chase. You know that's not what he meant. Well, who knows? I do. I know where it is. That dark edge to TJ's voice is creeping in again. I suppose there's no harm in asking. You can't deny that it's a little weird for five young adults to just show up on your doorstep asking to be let in. We don't have much of a choice, though, do we? TJ's walking ahead of us, marching up to the concrete steps without hesitation before immediately ringing the bell. Oh, wait, we didn't even think of what we we're going to say. I already know what I'm going to say. We stand there in sun silence for a bit and look around to the others. Carl looks completely uncomfortable, almost nauseous, his paws shoved deep into his pockets as he stares hard at the ground. Jen is staring at TJ, her brow furrowed, clearly worried. Julian just stands there as if the situation doesn't bother him at all. The door finally opens, revealing a young red panda, not much older than ourselves. He blinks at us, then fixes a smile on his face. Hello? Can I help you? I see TJ's ears flatten down for a moment, his originally tough resolve clearly faltering. Um, hello? The red panda stares down at TJ for a moment, waiting expectantly. I don't recognize him, and I'm sure I would have seen him around town if he'd moved in after Sydney's parents moved out. It must have been sometime recently, a few years ago. I decide that I should step in and let TJ try and gather his wits. Hi, I'm Chase, this is TJ, and... Carl, Jenna, and Julian. I point to everyone, feeling my cheeks grow hot. Hi, everyone. I'm Ninji. Another moment of awkward silence before I try to think of something else to say. How the hell do you bring up wanting to search someone's house because it belonged to your dead friend? Because I'm trying to figure that out, TJ speaks up again. M my Our old friend used to live here about 12 years ago? Ninji. Oh, really? Oh, what the fuck? Panda seems to think. Are you talking about Cindy? Sydney. Yeah, he was our friend. Oh, sorry, I couldn't remember the name. I thought his aunt told me about what happened. I think his aunt told me about what happened. Oh, Jesus, great. Also, text error. Just so you're, just so you know what's going on. Yes, and. Uh, he left something behind for us in his room. Is it all right if we come in and look for it? And she's originally inquisitive look is replaced by one of confusion and definitely a little bit of suspicion. Oh, all of you? I notice Carl's still staring hard down at, hard at the floor, his paws twisting in his pockets. If that's all right with you. And she stares at all of us for a good ten seconds, causing even me to glance down at the floor, realizing how stupid all of this is. Finally, he starts to step back, closing the door a little bit as he does. Uh, I'm sorry, but I don't think that's a good idea. Wait! TJ steps forward, his fur bristling. The panda jumps a little, closing the door further until the point where he can only see one of his eyes. S sorry, it's just... Maybe I could come in and the rest of my friends would wait outside. This will be really quick. I know exactly where to look. The panda's one eye looks back at us. TJ turns around and makes a shooting gesture with both paws. There's a pause, then we stumble back a little, down the steps onto the sidewalk. My face burns again in embarrassment, realizing what a bunch of crazy people we look like right now. I look back and see TJ standing alone on the porch, looking back at the red panda, his paws clasped together. Again, what feels like a very long silence seems to drag on until... NG open the door, opens the door slightly. You know what? Why don't you just tell me where it is and I'll have a look. Oh! Oh, yeah. Um... TJ seems surprised, as if only now considering that idea. It's the room on the left, down the hallway. TJ points at the door at an angle. In the closet, in the back corner, it, it might be in a box. NG's facial expression mirrors mine as I frown. A box in the closet, sitting there for over a decade. Uh. Alright, I'll have a look. And she disappears behind the door, and I hear a deadbolt slide into place. We stand there in silence for a while before Carl breaks it. Dude, he's calling the police. No, he's not. We look like a bunch of crazy people. We should leave. Not until he comes back out. I think I'm going to be sick. I think it's technically okay unless he tells us to leave. 
He did say he's going to look for it. No harm in just waiting for his answer. I see Carl scuff his hooves against the pavement, looking around nervously. I wonder if he's had too much weed or something. Why do you think it's in the closet? He used the shoebox in there as a spot for his treasure hunts before, you remember. I vaguely do, now that he mentions it, but I'm surprised TJ does. He was even younger. The door opens and Inji comes back out. His facial expression is completely different now. It's one of amazement and disbelief, but it's what's in his paws that catches my attention. It's a teal-colored shoebox, old and worn and torn through the corners. My mouth drops. Inji stands there for a moment, holding the box out. Is... is this it? It's not mine, and there's a piece of paper inside. TJ's paws shake as he reaches out to take the box, lifting the lid to look inside. It was in the spot that you said. I've never seen that before. I feel my stomach twist, more dismayed than anything that he found something. Do you not use that closet? It's a bit of an odd question, but I know now, but I know how the hell he might have missed it. But I want to know how the hell he might have missed it. And she shakes his head. No, not really. It's mostly a storage room right now. I think I've opened it a few times to put some boxes on the shelf, but I can't really remember. Do you not look inside when you first moved in? And she looks at me, and so does TJ over his shoulder. I guess now I'm starting to sound like the crazy person. Well, I can't really remember. It was a couple of years ago. I had family help me move in, so maybe they just thought it was mine if they saw it? I want to ask more, but I bite my lip, not wanting to seem as frustrated and suspicious as I am. It's definitely something I could have missed. I've found a few things in the crawl space from uh, the last family. Who lived here before you, if you don't mind me asking? Inji leans against the doorway, his arms folded, looking a lot more relaxed now. It was the family you're talking about, I think. The Bronsons? Yes. TJ's still looking down at the box, not having taken out the note. Yep, the woman who lived here before moved out right before that. what happened, then his sister moved in. She told me about what happened when I brought the place. And she looks down at the box that TJ's holding. Do you know what he left you? How do you how did you know how to find it? It's an an old scavenger hunt that we found. It told us to come here. Like something you left behind? Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm sorry about what happened to your friend. You must have been children at the time. No one says anything, so I nod for him. I'm sorry. Also, sorry for being so suspicious when you guys showed up. Thought I caught someone trying to break in a few days back. Can't be too careful. Don't worry about it, that's completely understandable. Inji nods and shifts around. I don't want to pry, but what does it say? I didn't read it since I don't want to intrude or anything. Um, she lifts the lids again and re reaches in and pulls out the piece of paper. It's identical to the others that we've seen. And she takes the box from the links so he can use both paws to unfold the note. Then he starts reading. I hope that you're all having fun. Soon you'll know what Chase has done. Figure it out. It's a piece of cake. If you can't, look by Carl's drawing at the lake. It goes quiet for a while. Only the sound is rustling through the trees. Then you hear a gagging sound and look back in time to see Carl hurling into some bushes. TJ is strangely calm as we sit in the motel room. It's been about half an hour since we found the last note. After Carl lost his lunch in the bushes, Julian drove him back home and we had to put the scavenger hunt on hold. TJ wants us all to be there for it. Julian is still with us and I keep wondering when the hell he's going to go home. He just joined our little group today and TJ acts like he needs to be a part of it for some reason. He barely even knew Sydney. But that doesn't really seem to matter. The whole thing is so ridiculous. It's so obvious that Sydney had, had nothing to do with this scavenger hunt. Someone's planting these damn notes and they have it out for me. I sit with my back against the headboard of the bed, staring at my legs, and TJ tries to defend this whole thing. If it's really bothering you, Chase, then, then you don't have to come. I bristle a bit. You're insisting that everyone else go, why not me? 
I forced myself not to look over at Julian. I do want you to come, but you're so angry. I've never seen you like this. Oh, I have. We all have. Chase is just acting like his old self now. Jenna sits in the corner of her laptop as usual, smirking. Pisses me the fuck off. Listen, whoever's been writing these writing these has it out for me. Look at what the last one said. Sidney wrote them, and he always kind of teased you. It's just like him. I go quiet, looking away with a glare. What do you think the clues are implying about you, Chase? I look for a moment, but it's hard to, hard with all the anger that keeps threatening to bubble up to the surface. I, I don't know. I just don't like the sound of it, and honestly... I'm trying to think of the right way to word it, then I'm going to... What am I going to say? If you respect me, you'd see that and stop this stupid hunt. He goes quiet for a moment, then Julian stands up. Hey, I'm gonna head out. Let me know what you guys decide to do tomorrow. I've got the whole day off. Oh, okay, man. Thanks for coming with us. TJ gives a st the stag a side hug, and I try to keep myself from bristling. Once Julian leaves out the door, TJ sits on the foot of the bed looking at me. I completely respect you, Chase. But I really think these are from Sydney. He's just teasing you. I don't say anything, choosing to look at the wall, feeling more unnerved by my own emotions than anything else. I don't feel like myself at all. I know I asked you this morning, but if you... What the fuck? Oh, Claudia Mara has arrived. <laughs> Thank you for the subscribe. I know I asked you this morning, but if you think this is someone else's doing, who could it be? Jenna crosses her arms, looking at me earnestly. I sit there quietly for a moment, debating on whether or not I should tell them. I decide I have to, since neither of the others seem to see it. I think it's Flynn. What? I think it's Flynn. And Carl. They're doing this whole thing. You can't be serious. Who else? Carl's the one that found the first note. I think Flynn gave it to him. The looks on Jenna and TJ's faces make me look away again. Am I going crazy? Chase, that's crazy, I know, but you saw how Carl was acting today, how nervous he was, he even threw up. Carl does that sometimes. Ugh. I slide my legs off the bed and let them hang over the side, fully facing the wall now. I know how Flynn was acting was back at the I know how Flynn was back at the river, but even he wouldn't do that. I look back at TJ with a glare. What about those texts he's sending you? What? TJ's paw flies into his pocket, a shocked look on his face. Jenna looks between us. What? Flynn sent TJ a text, swearing at him. I think he's been messaging you this whole time. TJ's quiet, just staring at me. TJ, is this true? TJ stares at the floor a moment before finally looking up, his voice oddly calm. Yeah, well, he's angry. Of course he would be. But he has no reason to be riding this scavenger hunt. Flynn would never do that. Are you sure about that? TJ glares back at me, and now I can tell I've made him angry. Yes! Why would he do it in the first place? I don't have to think hard on that one. To hurt TJ, to ruin our friendship by making up lies about me, to be a to just be a complete dick, take your pick! That's, that's absolutely ridiculous. I don't say anything, choosing to glare at the wall. Jenna looks between us again and shakes her head. All right, that's enough of this. Neither of you are acting like yourselves, so I think it's best we head to bed, all right? Whatever. I slide into the bed on my side, still staring at the wall, t listening as TJ gets up and goes into the bathroom. Jenna goes on typing on her computer. I lay there quietly, deciding that I'm going to have to do something to stop this. Sneaking out of the motel room is probably the hardest part. I know if they catch me at any point, it's over. At about 3 a.m., I slide out of the bed, listening to TJ's snores and watching Jenna unmoving from curl, unmoving form curled up on the bed in front of me. Quietly, I dig around in my bag for my keys and slip out the door and into the night. I grit my teeth as my car starts up, imagining TJ and Jenna pulling back the curtains and seeing me sitting in my car. I've got excuses. I'm sick. I had to drive to the emergency room, or even that I couldn't sleep and wanted to get a snack somewhere. They're all suspicious, but should be enough to cover my ass if things go south. I'll drive along the quiet road. My surroundings almost black, black since the moon has set. 
takes me a moment to find the side road that will take me to the shore. Once I do, I see one lonely orange light standing in the middle of the parking lot, but I park in the corner in the darkness. I sit in the car for a while, wondering what I'm doing, wondering what the fuck I'm going to do. But something drives me, a feeling that if I don't do this, then the rest of my life is going to be ruined. I can't let that happen. I open the door and quickly get out. I pull out my phone and turn on the light, finding the small dirt trail that leads to the inky blackness. The air is cool and I can smell the lake. Pretty soon I can hear it too, the soft, desolate sounds of the waves running against the thin strip of shore. It's peaceful, but at the same time it terrifies me, and for a moment I feel like the lake is one giant living thing. It dwarfs me with its presence, a giant, all-knowing thing. I n it knows I'm here. I shudder and force myself to continue. I find the shoreline and the dry sand shifts under my feet as I take a right and follow the shore. I try to ignore the sounds of the lake, that feeling that it's watching me, beckoning me towards it. Finally, I come across the boulder that I'm looking for, the one that Carl used to carve his drawings into. Of course, it would be something Carl used. That fat piece of shit. Thanks. I kneel down beside it, moving the light of my phone around until I find the drawings. I look at the super wolf etched into the rock, glaring. I see a glint of light above it. I shift the phone up to see what it is. I gasp and I can't help a ragged scream from escaping my throat. A tarantula sits there, staring back at me, its cluster of eyes shining back into the darkness. I stumble back into the sa sand and fall, hitting, sitting down hard and causing my teeth to clack together. Ah! I scramble back up. I look around for a rock and quickly find one. When I turn back around and lift the, lift the light, the spider is gone. I look around for a while in case it just moved around, maybe the ground on the ground closer to me. I don't see anything though, and I throw the rocket in, in at the at the the lake, cursing the cur cursing the damn thing. Then I kneel down and look at the spot between the rocky ground and the boulder. It takes a few moments, and I have to get real close, looking deeper into the crevice. And then there's a glint of what looks like metal. I start to dig first with my bare hands, then with the help of the flat rock hell laying nearby. I'm sweating and gasping by the time I pull the thing free. It looks like an old lunchbox. I shine a light on it and I can barely make out what looks like a cartoon dragon. I open it and pull out the note. I read it. In a fit of rage, I tear the stupid thing in half, throwing it on the ground. You fucker! I hiss it out through my teeth and pull out, pull out the piece of paper I'd just taken out of Jenna's notebooks along with a pen. I write for a moment using the old lunchbox as a flat surface. When I'm done, I drop it into the box and wedge the box into the crevice, covering it up with the loose dirt I had moved. I pack it down and stand back up. Thinking twice, I pick up the shredded note and stuff it into my pocket. Then I walk back up to the shore and up the trail, ignoring what looks like the eye of the eyes of tarantulas all around me. Maybe it's just stars. I don't remember much of the drive back, or the parking lot of the motel. The next thing I know, I'm standing next to the bed, glaring, glaring down at TJ, watching him sleep. Now it's the end of the... Yep, yeah, now it's the end. So, we don't know what the fuck he, the old note said. But we know that he wrote a new note and replaced it. Hmm... God damn. God dizzy damn.